Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. It's gonna be a beautiful day today. Spring is definitely here. We're finally seeing some relief from all of the cold overnight temperatures and we're gonna be able to start getting some plants out and making sure that we've got the garden cleaned up and ready to go. So today, we are going to be cutting back some Hakona Chloe grass. We are also going to be working with some Hookera and Tiarella and cutting those back. So I'll show you how to trim those up and get them ready for the season. We also may do many other things today because it's such a nice day. We'll see what we can get done. My name's Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B in Mid Michigan. And this is a patch of Hakona Chloe grass. It's also referred to as Hakoni grass, Japanese forest grass. This is the gold variety. There is also a variety that is variegated, but as these grow, they look absolutely lovely throughout the season and then even very lovely throughout the winter with this beautiful tan foliage. At this point, it has dried down and it's ready for cutting back. So we're just gonna go all the way back down to the ground. Make sure we don't cut off any little tips that might be there. And we're just gonna clean this completely up. So after I get going on this, what I will do is bring it in a little bit closer just so that you can see what some of the little tips look like if there are some growing. But it's always good to get out in the early spring to do this because that helps to make sure that you don't cut off any of that new growth. This nice material that I'm clipping off right here can make a wonderful mulch for your vegetable garden if you have seedlings or for any other plants that you might be growing on if you don't have a compost bin. Uh, you can just cut it up small and it acts similar to like a straw or a hay. I'm not seeing any new shoots yet, so that's actually a good thing because it makes cleanup a whole lot easier. Usually it's pretty easy to tell the new growth from the old growth because it's, on these, it is a bright yellowish limey green. On many other grasses, it will be a bright green as well because it's such fresh growth. Now I am cleaning up the debris, but I also will leave some behind because it is great for the ground and I will just mulch over it so it will look much tidier once I get my mulch. And uh, we are in the process of ordering that now because we order it bulk from a nearby landscape supply company and have it delivered in a huge mound. Because we order quite a few yards of it. Last year, I think I got eight yards and it ended up not being enough. Looks like some of this grass is actually just broken off, so easy to just pick up with my hands. And again, all of this nice leaf mulch we'll just leave here for now. One of the great things about cleaning up your garden in the springtime is you can 
get a really good look at what's going on in the garden. How your soil looks, what's coming up, what might not be coming up. And it's just very therapeutic to get out here and listen to the birds. Now again over here I'm not seeing any new growth so there's not really anything to show you a uh, close up at this point. My grass does come up fairly late so I definitely have no concerns about you know it not having to made it through the winter or anything like that. I just don't tend to see new growth until at least towards the end of April. Obviously every year is different depending on what the temperatures bring, but mostly it depends on, you know, the soil temperature. I do have a couple daffodils in here that I want to make sure I don't cut off. Well, with those out, this corner looks quite a bit tidier. And I will likely use some of this material as either mulch or put it in the compost pile myself. Next up, we're gonna come through and we are going to prune these Tiarella and Hookera. So you can see these old leaves with these long stems that are big and a bit crispy around the edges. And then there's some nice new growth on the inside. And what we wanna do is come through and just clean all of these up along the edge here so that we have a nice tidy border. And so that again, we make room for a nice new clean growth. It will be beautiful. Now I'll clip a couple of these and then I'll bring you in so you can see exactly what I'm doing nice and close up. I do have some Hakona Chloe grass right here along the edge of this garden as well. Okay, let me bring you in for a close-up. This one seems to be growing in a bit of a crack over here. Must have created a new one. That one doesn't need a ton of cleaning up, but I'm just going to cut off this one and this one here. And then I have tidied this one up here. So as you can see, this one is a really long stem and an old leaf. So I'm just cutting them all the way back to the main plant. Some of them don't look too bad, but it still does help to cut them back.
and we see all of that nice new growth right in here that's the stuff we're looking for it'll be fresh and clean won't have any of this winter damage on it and then we see some stems that are left over from the winter from the blooms last year And even some of these leaves are small, but because they're kind of faded and crispy on the edges, I'm cutting them off. And if you want, you can just, you know, pop them off with your fingers as well. It's perfectly fine. Any way you want to do it. All right, well, once we get this done, I have another big area of hookah that I showed in one of my garden tour videos that we really need to get after because it is really looking a little sad right now. Definitely needs to be cleaned up. It doesn't look like this area doesn't look too bad. This obviously has some fern foliage over the top of it, so we need to get that cleaned up. So we'll try to just breeze through this rather quickly now. Get it done so we can move on to another part of the garden. Now, I know sometimes this can feel to people like they're cutting away their entire plant, but this is, this is what you do. This is what makes it healthy. This is what keeps it growing and looking good for the season. Just kind of unburying this one from the leaves so I can see the foliage on the plant better. I've really enjoyed these pink fizz tiarellas. They have been really pretty for me. They have a beautiful pink bloom that does look fizzy. And they stay looking good pretty much all season. And if you miss a leaf, don't worry about it. It's okay. Just come back and do it later. I mean, the most important thing is that you don't cut back the new growth. Now I know the morning light might not be the best to show this, but hopefully you can see just how big of a difference this small cleanup can make in a border. You can now see the plants and they definitely are brighter and you can see that new foliage coming in and they really stand out from the rest of the garden now. Well, so there we have it, a nice clean, tidy path 
and we will head over to the other hooker area now. Let's go. Okay, well here we are in this space where we have a whole lot of different colored hookahs and boy, some of these have gotten quite leggy over the fall and this year, so we're gonna really trim these back and make them look tidy. Again, sometimes you can just pull the leaf and it will come off and that can sometimes just be easier. Obviously, you only want to do this with really well-rooted and established perennials because you don't want to pull your plant out of the ground. But sometimes you can also just grab a really big clump of leaves and cut them right off. And really, we're going around the outside primarily because that's where the old growth comes from. You have the, the growth comes from the middle and then uh, the, it just kind of pushes out the old growth to the sides. You may end up with some leaves also in the middle that need to be cut back. But for the most part, it's around the outside. So that's a really good way to kind of save yourself some time if you're in a hurry. Sounds like some of the geese are coming back our direction. I have some morning doves that I have found nesting in the area right by our sliding glass door, which is interesting because, get you a little closer here. Our sliding glass door, every time we open it now, <laughs> I hear the morning doves run away. We had some robins in that same spot before and it seems that the nest is being reused this year for the doves. And they definitely do not like us coming in and out so they kind of scatter away and make a whole bunch of noise when we're coming in and out of that door. We try not to disturb them too much but I wasn't even aware they were there until a couple of days ago. So the ground will begin to look a little bit bare around these once I start to get all of this extra old foliage away, but that's the normal part. And then eventually I'm going to try to pull out some of this mum because it is really trying to take over this area. And while it's pretty, I do not want it to, you know, take over these hookahs because I really like these for all season interest. The mums really only give you that beautiful color in the fall. already starting to look better just after cleaning up a couple of them. Now this one here is a caramel hookah and this is the one that the mum is growing right by. I'm actually just going to see if I can Nope, I can't pull up some of the mum. I was thinking maybe I could just pull some up right now. Nope, the dead foliage is pretty much just snapping right off. Oh, I might get a piece over here. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Now we're getting some of it up. no idea what that noise is you guys sorry
Now I know it looks like I'm being brutal with this mum, but I could plant all these parts in different places of my garden as well. I just want a small part of it to be left here. So I'm gonna pull back now all of the parts that are trying to creep out and root into the rest of the garden. And hopefully that will help keep it from taking over this season. I might have to dig out more of it later, but I'm glad to get some of it out this morning. It has definitely sent out quite a few runners. All right, that looks much better. A little more in control there. Let's finish up with this hookera. So definitely is looking like it's getting to the point where it could be divided and replanted. I'm not going to do that today, but you can just tell by the number of different uh, tops here and how high it is starting to come out of the ground. So I want to divide that and get it so that the crowns are still at ground level, you know, just above the ground level as opposed to sticking up right now. It's about an inch, I would say almost an inch above the ground. And they will just continue to get more woody and leggy if I just leave them. So we'll have to come back through and take care of that. Another thing that I wanna do in this garden bed is I do have a, um, this is a rubecchia. It's called cappuccino rubecchia. And I really would like to divide it at some point. So hopefully this spring I can, I can do that. It's kind of hard to get around the garden once it's gotten established. So I'm gonna try to get quite a few of these sucros back here before I come back out to the front. I'm also trying not to squish the soil. It's not that wet today, but it is still nice and moist and damp and I can tell that it's pushing down under, under my feet. Now this hookah also, this one's probably two inches out of the ground. So that one could use a bit of resetting as well. So I probably have some work to do in this garden area. This one here is a plum pudding and I've had these in my garden for years. And one of the things I like about this is that it, it doesn't seem to do that uh, in terms of pushing up and getting real woody as it gets older. Uh, I'm not sure why, but that's a really nice thing to not have to reset your perennials every couple of years. It also has a really nice growth habit and it's easy to divide. So it's definitely been a winner in my book. Hey, that looks good. 
tidy up this rudbeckia a little bit here. I always leave a bit of a stump because I want to make sure that I remember where it's at. Definitely, um, I'm going to need a lot more mulch in this bed this year. And sometimes that does help to offset some of the fact that the hooker kind of pushes out of the ground like it does or grows up on a stalk. Uh, but other times it doesn't and you just have to, you know, reset them. And you can dig them up, cut maybe an inch off of the roots themselves, and then plant it deeper. Okay, well now that that garden area is pretty well tidied up, I want to move on. We do still have some more to clean up in that garden area, but I do want to move on and show you something else today. I want to uh, cut back my butterfly bush, so I thought it would be a good time to show you how to do that. I do have one that I planted last year, and this one is not showing much new growth on its new stems, but it definitely has new growth down around the base. It's kind of hard to see. So this one I'm actually going to prune back pretty much all the way to the base. Simple as pie. And then over here, I have one that's been growing on for quite some time, a couple of years now. And it's definitely pushing out lots of new growth on this stem here, but the back stem does not have any. So I'm going to clip that one down at the base. It might actually put out some, some more new growth soon, but I don't know. I still want it to continue to work on some of its roots. And then this one, even though it is growing out here, I really want to cut it back so that... Let's see, I think I'm going to cut it back actually all the way to here. And it's got some nice growth along the stem that you can see. And so I just cut it right above this leaf node right here. And that will help it to flush out new growth soon. These usually wake up kind of slowly, but I've just noticed them pushing out some new growth. So it's a great time to cut them. I've got a couple more, so let's go do those. Oh wait, I almost missed the branch. Look at this one coming out here. I'm going to cut that one back too. All right. So here in the Half Moon Garden, we have this nice butterfly bush. This is a Pugster Blue. And you can see, man, it is really pumping out the new growth on some of these stems. But then other stems, like this one back here, are cracked and do not seem to be pushing any new growth. So that one I'm going to cut back all the way. It does have a little bit of green I see in the stem, so it's probably still alive. This one over here, I'm also gonna cut back. That one doesn't look alive, so I'm gonna cut that down all the way. This one definitely is alive. It's pushing out that nice fresh growth at the end. So I'm just gonna take that back to about here. Same thing with this one right above a node. And I like how this is growing right here, so I'm gonna take it right there because it looks so nice and strong. A little kid must have gotten a present or something that has a horn on it because I'm sure you guys can hear that honking. <laughs> all right, so that is all trimmed up. We can see that nice fresh growth on it. And now that will stay nice and bushy and we'll have lots of flowers. One more on the other side. This one is also pushing some good new growth, um, but I don't want to keep it that tall, so I'm just going to cut it back a little further there. This one will cut above a node. And this one, it doesn't look like it's alive. Um, it's kind of cracking, but I'm going to cut it right here because it is a very big one. So let's see if it's got any green in the middle there. Not much. So let's cut it back a little further. That looks better. I think that'll do for now. Oh, that stem felt a little bit dead. Okay. I'm just kind of cutting back until I make sure that I see some good 
some good green in the stem because I don't want to leave the tap as a dead stem. So that's part of why you wait to see if a stem is going to push new growth. But because these were really starting to push out all of that new growth, I wanted to get them trimmed before they start putting energy into, you know, any buds or things like that. So as you can see, trimming hookahs and trimming butterfly bushes can be really nice and easy and fun, I think. So if you haven't started doing that yet, it's a good time to do so. And, you know, if your butterfly bushes haven't started pushing growth yet, don't worry. It might be a few more weeks, especially if you're in some of the colder areas of the country. So I hope you're enjoying some new fresh spring weather because we are sure glad to be outside these days. Thanks so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time. Bye!